This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q, Season 1, Episode 5, Round 2. Thank you for all the happy anniversary wishes. We had an amazing and very relaxing time in Hawaii and plus all the delicious food out there. We spent half our time in Oahu and then the other half in Maui and we got to see Yang get married. And for those who've been following my channel for a while, Yang was our setter for the original Tall Ones for the first five years of our team. So I'm super happy for Yang and excited for his next stage in life. Thank you for the poster suggestion. I completely forgot about the fly image and I'm definitely thinking of buying that one. This is very perceptive and I never thought about Kageyama's insecurity in this way where his aggressive behavior is a result of his insecurity because everyone has been calling him a prodigy since he was young and to try to live up to that expectations and when you do fail you just feel this deeper sense of disappointment in yourself and all the expectations that people have around you so it makes sense why he would lash out in that way. This is something that as a coach I also try to be very careful about even if I do see a very young and talented player I try not to obsess over that and talk about how talented this player is. I try to acknowledge more of their work ethic and their attitude, even though in my mind, I know that physically they could be a very good player because there's two negative effects that could come from over praising someone's talent or physical ability. The first one, as we saw from Kageyama, is that it just puts way too much pressure on a young person. And instead of that person learning to enjoy the sport and the process of getting better, they end up spending so much time trying to meet the expectations of what everyone else expects them to be. The second downside is that you could develop a sense of arrogance in this player because when you're praising something that they are born with, versus praising something that they have to work for, it develops their character in a very different way. If someone's tall, fast, naturally athletic, jumps high at a young age, honestly, those things are something that they're born with. And yes, you can develop those qualities over time, but a lot of those exceptional abilities are just natural. And if you don't praise qualities like how hard someone works, what a great teammate they are, their positive attitude, they're not gonna develop the necessary work ethic and humility that is required to maximize the potential that we all see in that athlete. So next time you see a very talented young player, try to compliment them on things that are within their control that are more character-based versus talent-based. Now let's get this high cue party started. Are we having more flashbacks again? From Kageyama. Oh no, we're replaying that amazing spike from Hinata. I'm gonna set with him. Here's a precision. Boom. That was pretty sick. That's another scene that never gets old. I think that was more of a release from Kageyama, like, man, that took so much effort just to make it perfect for Hinata. Hinata 24-23. <laughs> you notice that? I don't know if this is physically possible, but Hinata gets clotheslined by the ball. For those who don't know what that term means, it means when you're running full speed or jumping full speed and you run into something at your head and then your legs kick out in front. That's gotta be a really heavy ball to be able to be clotheslined by the ball here. <laughs> How his legs swing out. That part's not realistic. Great technique. You see how Hinata has his elbow all the way back, palm facing downward. You don't want to have your palm open. And Tsuki's mouth is open like he's really trying to block this Hinata guy. And the funny thing is this whole time, Tsuki is trying to act like he doesn't care, but we all know deeply inside, he cares a lot. Look at that face. Shark teeth. Crush with nobody up. And they end up winning. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, I like that. You see how Tanaka's taunting Tsuki right back in his face. And I bet Daichi's gonna tell him to calm down. I remember when I first watched this, I thought that was Daichi, but now I know it is the famous Inoshita, or maybe not famous to anybody else but me, but it's funny how he's inserting himself and saying, hey Tanaka, you gotta calm down. You're only good right now because the first years are making you look good. I guess everyone is a little tired of Tanaka's over-the-top attitude. They lack conviction. People can notice even then that they lack the will, the energy to win. Oh, this music is good, man. I'm glad I'm listening to Full Blast. <laughs> if we could keep track of how many times Hinata gets hit in the face. Oh, dumping three on three. Ooh, taking off his sweater. Now he's getting serious. This is crazy that Kageyama is doing this as an incoming freshman. What I mean by that is Kageyama here, he hasn't set the ball yet and great setters wait to see what the middle blockers are going to do first before they set. So here's an example. The middle blocker is going to be closest to you in front of you. So that's why he's the easiest person to see. If you don't see the middle blocker, that means they've already cheated behind you to block the outside hitter. Then you either set the middle or you set to the left side outside hitter. If you see them cheating forward, then you back set. If you see them following you, you can do a front set or back set because now they have to go a long distance both ways. So that's what Kageyama is doing here. He's waiting to see what Tsuki is going to do. And if Tsuki is going to follow Hinata, boom, he sets Tanaka one-on-one -on -one against Yamaguchi. That's a really good matchup. But if Tsuki is going to follow Tanaka, he's just going to set quick to Hinata. So the only way to beat Tanaka's team is to serve so tough that Kageyama has to go all the way off the net and he has to set a high ball or he can't see who's going to be blocking. But great straightening strategy from Kageyama. Kageyama, yeah, it is taxing to have to set with that much accuracy. Especially since Hinata is probably not that consistent with his timing. He's just going. Alright, you see that? So you see how Tsuki is in front of Kageyama. So he's kind of cheating that way a little bit. So that's why Kageyama is setting behind him. And that's a quick set too. Oh, and he crushes it. That's a nice image with that double celebration. How often are we gonna see Kageyama and Hinata this happy together? Not very often, so just wanna enjoy this little moment here for a little bit. Yeah, three on three is pretty tiring. That's cool that Tanaka recognized what Tsuga said to Kageyama. <laughs> Interesting that he calls Kageyama's tosses reckless. Man, Kageyama's so tired, he's using the ha hanger on the net to support him. I remember talking about how when you combine both of the athletic abilities, it amplifies each other. They are a perfect complement. Fast, accurate setter with a very fast and athletic hitter. Nani. 
This is one of the most detailed images I've seen of Tsuki. You see the little smirk from his cheek and you see the strain in his neck like He's trying to hold his chin so high because he's so better than everybody else. But look at all the little strands going in a different direction on his brow. Really well-drawn image here. Uh, is that true? <laughs> I would still make him shake the hands. This is what irritates me about Tsuki. Instead of just saying they beat us straight up, he's got to find some other reason as to why they lost. Oh, because of course the king is supposed to win. He's supposed to be a good player. We're supposed to lose. Just take a loss like a man. <laughs> Oh, and Daichi's calling him out for saying, you played pretty hard, Mr. Too Cool for School. He must sign it now. Yeah, they get their uniforms. This is one of the most exciting parts of a season, is getting your uniform. Oh, what a cool, this is such a cool camera angle to draw the camera view from the opening of the box instead of always looking down at it. So cool, and you get to see the, the tape being peeled off too. I think it's cool that they didn't make the jackets too flashy and it just goes to show that they are not a typical powerhouse school, kind of like a low budget, but people are still excited about the gear. Yeah, they look sick. I do remember my first time receiving gear in high school. Jersey was a little too big, but you didn't care because you were just so excited to wear it. That's odd. I wonder why they personally said good job. And the fact that Kageyama is actually initiating practice with Hinata is big. Oh, is this Nishinoi? Oh. <laughs> I thought it was Nishinoi. Seijo? This is our first opportunity to meet Takeda Sensei. Man, words already got around. Takeda Sensei definitely became one of my favorite characters. Didn't really get to see his arc though, no, no tragic backstory with him. Yeah, scheduling is so time consuming as a coach. <laughs> a barbecue. Interesting. Looking back, I think they wanted to do that because they probably just wanted to see which setter was truly a better setter between K pop and Kageyama. <laughs> 
Oh, they're interested in Kageyama. <laughs> hey, either way, playing against a good team is still a good experience, doesn't matter what the reason is. What a true team player. I like Suga from day one, and I like him even more now. That is not a lot of time to prepare for a big match. And this is Hinata's first chance to play against a good quality team with a real team. Hi! This really is telling of Kageyama's character here when he talks to Suga. The fact that Kageyama acknowledges that the main reason why they want to play them is they want to see Kageyama set because they know he's going to be the future of Karusuno. But Kageyama has the respect of his elder Tsuga. And not just because he's the elder, but he was the starting setter from previous years. Maybe he just wants the blessing from Suga to say, is it okay for me to do this? And Suga is so used to just being a forgotten talent. Overlooked. And the fact that Kageyama recognizes that talent is not the only reason why someone is going to be good. What a true competitor. Wow, and he even said he has to earn the trust of his teammates. I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that junior high game was very traumatizing for him. Sugasan! Oh, food time, we get our first official meal from Haikyuu here. And it's our first chance to meet the future coach Ukai too. That would be awkward if they did play on the same team because they still wouldn't want to hit for Kageyama. Wow, so thoughtful. This is so selfless of Suga to say that yes, he wants to play, but he also wants to show the team that Kageyama is not the same king from the junior high days that some of the teammates from Seijo remember. So selfless. That's very touching. That's a very touching thing to say. <laughs> wow, look at this illustration of the other four teammates, the, the ghostly look, that's pretty scary. No nose, no eyes, just pale face, a complete look of surprise. That's such a cool effect, really good illustration, very creepy. <laughs> Aha, you gotta wait for the elders. Oh yeah, we got Coach Ukai! Should not eat before your elders. Yeah, he's part of a real volleyball club now. Poor little loner Hinata. And Kagiyama having a specific taste for the curry buns. This is so funny. You get to learn about Coach Ukai before he actually is the Coach Ukai. But look at him, chilling back with a cigarette, but he's got his feet on the counter with his slippers off. I don't know if that's rude in Japanese culture, but that's definitely rude in other cultures. But I just love that about him. He's just kind of this bad 
boy, careless guy, but he ends up being a really insightful and mature coach. It's just funny to see this part of him. Now he's consulting Kageyama to decide what position Hinata should play. Now it's time for our halftime snack time. The first snack is gonna come from the more traditional selection from Sakura Ko. I have no idea whether this is gonna be... Oh, interesting, it says extra virgin olive oil. Is this some type of olive candy? But I picked it because it's the most interesting wrapping. I wasn't sure if it's gonna be salty or savory, but it looks like it's gonna be savory and very crunchy. Let's listen to the crunch. Mmm. It's like a salty rice puff with a unique flavor. Maybe that's what the olive oil flavor is supposed to taste like, but it tastes good. Now it's time to choose a snack from the more modern selection, Tokyo Treat. Every month there's a unique flavor of Kit Kats and I'm always excited to try their flavors here. We got cookies and cream. Look at that packaging. I already know this is gonna be delicious. Even got my technique down, boom. Exactly like you imagine it to taste. Cookies and cream, ice cream, a little crunchy with that Kit Kat. If you want to try your own authentic Japanese snacks, Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat are monthly subscription services where you get to have authentic Japanese snacks delivered straight from Japan right to your door. And every month they have a different variety of local snacks that you can only get in Japan. Use my discount code and link in the description box to get $5 off your first order so you can enjoy your Japanese treats with me as we watch Haikyuu together. One thing I miss about these halftime sequences is seeing who actually hits the water bottle. But then I think everyone ends up hitting the water bottle like 90% of the time. Did you see how they timed that with the music? Duh. I love it when the, the imagery, the video syncs up with the music. All right, let's see who the original starting lineup is. So here we first learn that Hinata is going to be the next middle here, and he's going to be opposite of Tsuki. I didn't realize that Inoshita was on the original starting group, but I don't see Daichi here. So this must not be the actual starting lineup. Maybe this is just a practice group. Who knows? I, I, I'm actually looking forward to see. Seto. Oh, okay, this is the group they're going to try specifically against. Seijo. Most importantly, you're using Hinata in a position where height matters. So Tanaka is asking why he's putting Hinata there in a position where height is important for a middle blocker. And I'm curious what he, how Hinata is going to respond. But definitely they're going to try to get more offense out of that. <laughs> yeah, this is volleyball education time. Look at these graphics. The control tower, the commander, Wing Spica. Dude, what if I got posters of these guys all over the room, like each of these snapshots? That would be really cool. Middle blocker. One really cool detail I like about their hands is how the fingers are not just like mitts like this. They're not just straight fingers. If you notice all the hand gestures, like look at Hinata's hand is a little more relaxed and his left hand is down and here and fingers are spread. And you look at Suki's hands, the thumbs are kind of spread out, but that type of detail requires you to really study what is going on with a volleyball player's bodies. And even if you look at the way Hinata is arching his upper back a little bit, that's very realistic about how someone would spike. And you can tell when someone doesn't understand the game if some of these postures and some of these poses are stiff. Like let's say the block was just, you know, wrist straight like this, or maybe Hinata's hands were just open instead of having his right hand relaxed here, or maybe the chest was straight instead of arched, just like an actual spike. Just incredible nuances that these artists are able to capture. We have not seen Nishinoi yet. I forgot who plays the original libero. <laughs> the ultimate decoy. 
ルイックでガンガン手を貸せる敵ブロックの注意をお前に向けさせるそうすれば他のスパイダーマンは何を言うのか何人もお前の動きにアホにする。フォーリングイディオツ。キモチダロー。ああ、コップ things we want to talk about here。This is where you get to appreciate Hinata's childlike behavior because it reminds me of like an older brother, younger sibling. It doesn't have to be older brother because older sisters do this too. So, older sibling, younger sibling type behavior where the older sibling is trying to convince the younger sibling that a bad or unfortunate situation is actually really good, or maybe trick them into like an example. This is something that my older brother would do to me if we got two cookies and one cookie was bigger, or maybe one flavor was better than the other, like a chocolate chip cookie versus a, a sugar cookie. If he wanted the better cookie for himself, he would keep the chocolate chip cookie and then try to sell me on why the smaller sugar cookie is better. Like, oh, you're so lucky. You don't get chocolate chips. No one likes chocolate chips. And the sugar cookie is the best in the world. You're so lucky. Look at you. And then, of course, me being the younger, dumb sibling, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, right? You kind of have this doubt because you sense that something is not right. But then you're so sold on the idea that this is something really tasty. And then I forgot how much of a lackey Yamaguchi is. I'm already irritated at these type of players. <laughs> And I like that Tsuki、uh, just tells him to shut up right away. All the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> blocking, yeah. You will be a locking liability if you are shorter. I think I talked about this before in the first reaction. Where even if you jump the touch the same height, taller people get to that taller point faster. This is the preseason. This is the best time to try anything. Because the whole point of the preseason is not to win, it's just to experiment with things early in the season so you can learn from them and improve for the season. <laughs> He is a high strung person. <laughs> Uh, I forgot about those early moments of from Hinata. Michimiya.、Uh, I've said this so many times. I really hope they create a whole series of Haikyu based on the women's team. <laughs> I like Daichi's response that he just has this confidence. What she said was actually offensive, but you know, if someone went up to me when I was in high school and said, Hey, aren't you guys gonna get crushed? I would be pretty upset. But Daichi handles it confidently and relaxed and says, No,、nah, I think we got some good first here, so I think we'll have a good show. And it's funny that they are referencing the moment where the principal got his toupee knocked off. That's definitely top three. Favorite haiku scenes. Am I the only one that likes that scene so much? Wow. If people only knew how good Hinata and Kagiyama would be and how good Karasuno would be, this is, it just gives me chills to know that they started off at this point and then. They end up winning in the, the, the finals of the biggest tournament, the nationals. Yeah, being able to be in the same room that your mentor is in is a pretty cool experience. I wonder if this is the scene where we get to see that broken broomstick. That Nishinoya did. Oh 
man, you guys see how Hinata lifted his head? You think about how subtle and unimportant the scene is when Hinata goes from head down to head up, but that delay animation, that's what makes it feel so real. Like you want to go out and actually rub Hinata's head. So as the head is moving up, the hair is still pointing down. And then once the head is up, then the head hair flicks up afterward for that, that flowiness of the hair. Look at that, kind of pointed down and then it flicks up. <laughs> Do you see that scene? Oh man, putting his feet, legs into the jacket. I should get a poster of that one, huh? Everyone's wondering about Hinata's mental state. <laughs> This is an interesting kind of embarrassing animation there. I don't really get an embarrassment feel from this style of animation where he's kind of moving like a, you know, those those wavy blow up creatures that they have out in front of um, car dealerships. Maybe the, the hotness of the hair, and I think they try to make him feel warm, but this is one animation where I don't feel like it's as successful. <laughs> I think it's cool that Daichi is already consulting Kageyama's thoughts. What do you say here? What is he scolding him about? You make light of the anxiety we cowards feel. So Tsuga is putting himself in that cowards category. I wonder why. I don't really see him as a coward. Maybe not a confident person. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone like that. Very high strung. Oh, is he gonna go out and vomit? You know what's interesting is that no one's ever told Hinata that he's going to be some great player. In fact, that's the opposite. They've told him that he's not going to be that good, and then Kageyama, they told everyone's told him he's going to be a great player. Now we first get to build our relationship with the bathroom. Oh no, he's going to run to Zuki. That's right. <laughs> Ugh, look at Yamaguchi's a smug face, trying to act like the tough guy. <laughs> they didn't get the reaction they wanted out of Hinata, so they're thrown back. Kakiyama probably doesn't even know what wise cracks means he's just being honest <laughs> he has no self-awareness that's true <laughs> that was a whole crazy circus scene pretty entertaining Yeah, that's me before every tournament still. There's a little... That, that They should make a whole series around her too. These still scenes are very telling of the person's personality. I'm assuming that's like a workout mat on the right, then we got a dumbbell, clothes hanging on the left. And notice the difference between this and Hinata's room. Kageyama already lifting weights and considering exercise outside the court and middle school. That shows a lot about his dedication to his craft. Oh, that's right. K-pop was the bully of Kageyama, so he's visualizing what it's like to play against Seijo again. Pocky stick, one of my favorite snacks. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, I love that the animation of the bus bouncing around. Poor Tanaka. Right, now we get to watch the end scenes because we don't need to worry about spoilers. Daichi is looking pale. Ooh, I'm excited. Look at this. this is a pretty sick image here with Zuki looking forward, Kageyama looking down with his mean look, and then they got that flames in the background. That would get me excited about the next episode. Here are my immediate thoughts about episode five. It really does give me chills just watching the beginning stages of how Karasuno is formed and how, I mean, Inoshita in the lineup, I totally forgot that he was considered one of the first people to be tested in the starting group and then being a substitute later and then how nervous Hinata used to get before games and then later in season four being amped up and pumped up for the game just a complete 180 turnaround and it just makes me that much more excited to really appreciate the journey and how far they've come all the way through season four and correct me if I'm wrong is it just a full year of development from season one to season four or is it two years and honestly i still get confused about the spring tournament the national tournament because i know they've been to a couple big tournaments so i'm assuming they have maybe three big tournaments a year that are kind of national level where a lot of schools go to if you can help clarify for me in the comments below that'd be much appreciated if you guys have been enjoying my reaction videos please consider supporting elevate yourself by leaving a super thanks in the comments signing up for our patreon or buying yourself some sakurako and tokyo treats all the money from that goes directly back into making better videos for you guys and helps me grow as a content creator